So now you need to be able to draw out the electron configurations of a particular element. And to be able to do that, uh, there are three rules. And for the ATAR syllabus, you have to know the names, unfortunately. Uh, so the alpha principle means you just follow, it in, follow the uh, lowest to highest order. So you fill in the lowest energy levels first. So if you're using the periodic table, you just fill in the 1s first, and then you go, you work your way down, then you go to 2s, and then 2p, and then 3s, and then 3p, and then 4s. You just have to realize this is not 4d, and this is just drops a little, and it's 3d. Uh, the other way to do it is the diagonal rule, where you just write out 1s, and then, so you have to know it's SPDF. And then each two, you do two of them, three, you do three of them, four, you do four of them. By the time you get to five, it doesn't really matter, and you can kind of stop there. And then you just draw a diagonal down. So you do 1s first, then 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s. Uh, and so the answer, um, it looks like this, whether or not you use get it from the periodic table and just remember this little jump here, uh, or do this method here, which is, um, which will probably avoid you forgetting uh, the various jumps that go around the place. So that's probably, this is the easiest, but there's that particular flaw. This is harder, but you probably won't get make a mistake. Uh, and so I'll probably use the uh, periodic table because I don't want to write this out with my pen each time. Uh, and so you start there. So it depends on how many electrons you have. Um, so as soon as you've, you've used up all your electrons, you stop. Uh, so if you're doing carbon, uh, so this is the energy level here, so it's 1s and you've got 2, 2s2, and then you've, you've already got 2, you've only got 2 more, so you'll end up having um, that, you'll end up stopping there because 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6, and carbon is 2 plus 2 plus 2 carbon will be here, uh, and there'll be 6 protons, 6 electrons. Um, and so you would have stopped there, and you don't continue, so that's how the Alf-Bow principle works, you start with the lowest and go the highest. The next one is the Huns rule, which will be more significant when you do these uh, orbital diagrams, which we'll show a bit later. Uh, this one here has two, four, six, eight, uh, and so that is uh, got an extra two. Uh, so that must be carbon, nitrogen, it must be the oxygen here because it's got eight electrons in here. So we've gone a little bit further, uh, and what you see here is that you first you fill the two p x gets one electron. The 2PY gets one electron, the 2PZ gets one electron. Uh, you don't need to do this XPY uh, for the ATAR syllabus, but you may need to do these orbital diagrams. And so that one's that one, actually. And then when you get to this one, you can now start refilling the XYZ. Uh, and so now that'll do the 2PX will now have two in there, and the 2PY will still have the one, the 2P. Z will have one, but you don't really see that because you don't write it that way. All you're going to be doing is calling that a 2p1234, uh, and you're not actually breaking it up into this uh, into this section like this until you do the orbital diagrams. Pauli exclusion principle is um, that the electrons are actually spinning in opposite directions to decrease the mutual repulsion. There still is some mutual repulsion here, which you'll see in the exceptions in the last video for this subtopic um, and so this is not favorable uh, certainly this is a lot worse uh, and so the Pauli exclusion principle says that the electrons are spinning in opposite directions which again you're not going to see when you do a 2px2 or in this particular case it's just a 2p4 uh, because we haven't in this case we haven't broken up into the xyz the three different p shapes so going on, uh, just to make it a little bit more complicated, you can get tricks with um, cations and anions, so negative, positive and negative ions. Uh, and so if there's a plus there, then you must have to make sure you've removed one of the electrons. And so you take the one with the highest energy and get rid of that. Um, and as you'll note there, it's, it's now got a nice full shell of a noble gas, and same with the oxygen. They're both the same in far as their electron configurations are concerned. So with... Um, Oxygen wants to gain two electrons to have a full shell, and so you have to add an extra two there, uh, so it'll be 2p6 as well. And lastly, in order to cut down the, the amount of writing, you can just take the full uh, electron shell, as you can see here. So you can just take these shells here, and you can just add the little bit extra to it, and we know that the previous stuff doesn't need to be written. So argon, 
is over here. So argon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. If you want to draw uh, the electron configuration for titanium, which is this, uh, you can cross out this bit and just write the argon shell and just write the little bits extra on top of it. Uh, for this particular instance, um, because the overlap is so close, you can actually interchange these and you shouldn't lose a mark for that. Um, and you can do that all the way down to helium. Uh, so you could technically write um, you could technically write carbon as a, so get rid of the 1s2 there and just write uh, 2s2, uh, 2p2 for carbon rather than the 1s2, although no one does that because 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you're actually doing more strokes. Um, so that's probably why no one does it. All right, whereas this one is quite common.